Hi there. Today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, and two days ago, my mother, Ellie Drummond, passed away at the age of 72. She died from metastatic lung cancer, and it happened very quickly. She was diagnosed with cancer less than two months ago, and after ending radiation treatments, it only took a little more than three weeks for her to reach the point where she finally died in her sleep. I was there with my family over the past weekend as we did our best to care for her during her final hours. This week we've been going through her home and putting her affairs in order, and I've been thinking about many times where she was an important part of my life as I grew up. And that's why I'm speaking to you on this video right now. Our family was not especially religious, and this is why we're not having a memorial service for her, even though we all loved her very much. But Mom had a love for gadgets and technology, even up to her final days, and I felt it would be appropriate to pay my last respects to her by making this video and posting it on YouTube. I think she would have approved, and if she was watching this right now, she would certainly be embarrassed at first, but she'd watch this until the end. And I hope she would mostly be smiling. Everyone's life has its good and bad parts, and I want to get the bad parts out of the way quickly, especially because they shape much of her life. We were abused as we grew up, sometimes physically, but much more emotionally, and Mom may have taken this more than any of us. We all loved our grandmother dearly, especially Mom, and while our Nana did her best to raise her daughter well, Mom ended up being a quiet person who almost certainly married my father in order to leave home and get away from her mother, because we love our family much more when we're not living with them. After she was married, Nana did her best to support Mom, even to the point where she drove from Cambridge to Hudson a number of times to comfort her after her husband did things to her, physically and emotionally. In the space of only five years, they had four children, myself and my, my three brothers, but finally they were divorced when I was about four years old. I didn't understand it at all because I was so young, but I can talk easily about this, especially because it was so long ago and it's history that happened. Mom lived with Nana and the four of us in Cambridge during the early 1970s, and I remember Mom strapping me to a seat on the back of her bike and biking all over town with me riding behind her. And I'm convinced Mom used me as an excuse to get away from Nana because one of my favorite memories of that time was when she took me to see the movie Jesus Christ Superstar when I was only five years old. She never said exactly why she took me to see that movie at such a young age, but I'm convinced she used me as an excuse. She was taking her son to the movies, and she didn't tell Nana that she was going to see this particular movie, because Nana certainly wouldn't have approved. And this is why Jesus Christ Superstar became an important part of my spiritual upbringing. I didn't understand the movie at all, but I loved it anyway. <laughs> the weird symbolic settings of the actors climbing up on scaffolding and Judas riding a crane down from heaven to sing the climactic song, and especially the song Damned for All Time, where Judas was being chased by tanks. All I knew then was the music playing was exactly the same as the Batman TV show theme, and I remember loudly singing Batman during that song. The soundtrack album to that movie has been important to me ever since, and I have Mom to thank for it. And then Mom married my father-in-law, who we all called Dad, even though he was very harsh towards us all, especially Mom. He did hit us a number of times, and he hit Mom a few times, but not too many. Most of the time he was oppressive, but I can say one good thing about him. He was still brave enough to step forward and marry a woman seven years older than him with four kids. He didn't do a very good job supporting us, but he did his best, and they were married 42 years before he died from obesity and heart problems. But one thing Dad did do was give Mom and all of us a love for gadgets and technology. This was a part of their relationship from the very beginning, and it influenced my brothers and me as we grew up. And that's why I think you'll enjoy what happened on their wedding night. 
Mom and Dad were married in 1975, and they spent their honeymoon at a hotel in New Hampshire. And in the lobby of the hotel was one of the very first Pong arcade games. And they fell in love with that game, and Mom and Dad spent their wedding night in the hotel lobby, pumping about $20 and quarters into that Pong arcade game. Shortly after that, they bought one of the first Pong home video games from Sears, and we were playing home video games in our home from the earliest days. We quickly broke that game because my brothers and I destroy just about everything in our home from playing too hard with them. But our family also had the first generation of the Atari 2600, two or three years before it became a phenomenon, and Mom was playing those games right along with us. But Mom had also been an original Beatle maniac before I was born, and because of this, I grew up in the 70s listening to her favorite music, especially the Beatles, the Who, the Moody Blues, ELO, Billy Joel, and early Chicago before Peter Cetera turned it into junk. There was one time when I was very young, and Mom showed me the cover of the Beatles' Red album, and I didn't understand who they were at the time. But apparently there was a slight similarity between George Harrison and my father, and I remember pointing to his face and asking if he was my daddy. Mom's reply was, I sure wish he was. There was also one very unusual album at that time that, once again, has been a very big part of my life, thanks to Mom. And that was the musical version of The War of the Worlds, where they took H.G. Wells' story and set it to disco music. And this has been one of my all-time favorite albums ever since, thanks to her. And that's one thing I can say about Mom. She always encouraged us. Eventually, I discovered my own hobbies, and my brothers got into their own things, but I can't remember one single time when Mom and Dad ever said, no, you can't wear those clothes or grow your hair like that, or no, you can't watch that movie or listen to that music. We didn't have a lot of money as we grew up, but Mom especially tried to find ways to provide for us, and one of my most prized possessions is a copy of J.R.R. Tolkien's Unfinished Tales, which she gave me for Christmas in 1980. Mom was there with us when we fell in love with Star Wars and science fiction movies in the 1980s, and in the 1990s I became an amateur movie buff and critic, and she shared her favorite classic movies with me. Mom and Dad gave me my first CD player as a Christmas present back in 1986, and only six years later they gave me a Laserdisc movie player because they were still keeping up with gadgets and technology. They also gave me my first DVD player ten years after that, and because of them I was inspired to get a Blu-ray player and upgrade some of my movies to Blu-ray. Dad, meanwhile, would take up a new hobby every few years, and Mom followed his lead, which led to them running a pet store for several years, and that meant our home was filled with aquariums and tanks full of mice and hamsters and iguanas and chameleons and one cat. You always remember your first pet, and for me, it was Mo. It was Mom who named him Morris, but we all called him Mo. <laughs> And during my school years in the 70s and the 80s, he was my cat and Mom's cat. Mo would either sleep on my bed or Mom's bed. And when I went to sleep at night, Mo would walk across my chest, lie down, and purr as I fell asleep. We all helped out at the pet store, though we called it the shop, until Dad dropped it like a rock when he discovered his financial backer was using it as a cover for laundering drug money. This was 35 years ago, and I can confidently say my dad was not involved in that stuff, which was why he suddenly abandoned the pet store and we moved to Bellingham. Dad bought us a house there that would prove to be his undoing because he let the house decay into ruin over the next three decades. Mom stayed with him nonetheless, unfortunately, but there were still some good times as she followed Dad and got into fishing and metal detecting and Civil War reenactments and geocaching and even computers. He didn't ignore her, at least not until his final years, and she took part in these hobbies and she did have a lot of fun with them, and she often talked about them with my brothers and I. 
And you don't see many people mom and dad's age running a computer shop and repairing PCs while maintaining an active Civil War website, but they ran Bellingham Computer during the 1990s until it folded and dad became an EMT. When I was married in the early 2000s, mom and dad were there at my wedding, and when I was divorced eight years later, she was still there for me. To this day, I know getting divorced was the best thing I could have ever done, and my whole family took my side, and I've never regretted it. And then, over the past 10 years, I learned to cook, and I discovered cast iron cooking. And I learned some important lessons in cooking from Mom, and I took on her love of chicken. Mom's favorite food was always chicken, and it was because of her that I enjoy cooking chicken probably more than anything else. In 2013, Mom and I made a video of cooking Nana's famous pasta sauce, and I'm glad to have that video here on YouTube as a way to remember her. It was because of Mom that I gave my very first cast iron skillet its nickname of my redneck pan, and she gave me an enameled cast iron grill pan for Christmas in 2010, only a couple of weeks after I was bitten by the cast iron bug. I eventually got rid of that pan, and I don't regret it because there are other pans in my collection that have a lot more meaning for her, especially a Griswold square egg pan that I found, and I gave it to her as a Christmas present two years ago. I found this pan and gave it to her because of Nana, her own mom, who had one of these Griswold pans as mom grew up. Nana's cast iron was passed on to my cousin, Mom's niece, so I found this skillet especially for Mom. And now that Mom has passed on, I've inherited this pan, which I'll always keep as a memento of her. And then Dad passed away two years ago, and Mom was free to enjoy herself, probably for the first time in her entire life. Some people have been known to waste away after their spouses die, but the past two years may have been the happiest she had in her entire life. She still kept her love of gadgets, and how many people at the age of 70 do you know who intentionally buy and use an Ultra HD widescreen TV, a Windows laptop, and Alexa? This was something that really made her different from other folks her own age. And I do wish she hadn't been diagnosed with cancer so soon after finally being able to live her own life. But that's what happened. At least she didn't have to suffer very long. And my brother Chris was able to call all of us together last week to be with her and care for her and to say our goodbyes. And just after midnight, two days ago on Monday morning, I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought about her. I spent a couple of hours lying in bed thinking of Mom and the many good times we had together. And at about 2 a.m. on Monday morning, I received a text from my brother saying she'd passed away in her sleep. So I think the chances are very good that at the moment she passed away, I was thinking of her. Now these silly stories barely scratched the surface of how important and close Mom was to me and how much she meant and how she helped and supported me for all of these years. She had many personal moments with my brothers that are just as important to them as the ones I've mentioned here. And of course, there are many, many moments that I'll never be sharing in a YouTube video because those are private moments and they're best kept private. But even so, if you've enjoyed these moments enough to stay through this entire video, then I appreciate that and I thank you because you've let me get some things off my chest and help me to feel better, especially since I no longer have mom to turn to for support. And that may be one of the things I'll miss about her most of all, knowing that at the age of 52, I'll have to carry on without her. But she'll always be there, a part of my heart that I'll cherish forever, because she knew me more than anyone else, and she was the person who raised me and helped me to become who I am today, for better or for worse. And I have my mom to thank for this, and I'll always remember her. So I can only say once again, for the final time, I love you, Mom. Thank you for everything. And thank you very much for watching.